Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. It's a good hedge against inflation. It's a good hedge against real uncertainty. It's really liquid. Uh, so they, they, they've been uh, buying up demand for gold. Every time that uncertainty looks a little bit less, so today, for example, then we get these big moves uh, to the downside. Now, gold and the Aussie are, have an interesting relationship because the Australians are a big producer of commodities in general, but they're also specifically a big producer of gold for the, for the world. And uh, so higher gold prices is actually very supportive for the Aussie. So the way I look at this is I see that, uh, I see that the Aussie has been consolidating for the last couple of months. We were just looking at that chart. The Aussie has been consolidating after having a really lost a lot of value versus the dollar. We had that, that, we had that big uptrend on the AUX. And then uh, all of a sudden, we've got gold starting to look a little bit weak, and we're against a uh, fairly significant, I would say, considering the time frame, resistance level. So what if things do start to uh, peel off here a little bit and gold does start to come back down? That's, you've already got an Australian dollar that's, being, that's suffering because of economics in Australia. And then you have, compounding on that, you have one of their, one of their significant commodity exports, gold, uh, uh, and something the traders look at is very correlated to the Aussie, beginning to peel off as well. That could break the trend for the Aussie. That could break this consolidation for the Aussie. And then we have this interesting uh, opportunity to the upside. So I'm going to look at the AUX again. So I brought up the AUX again. And if you were looking at this in the spot market, you would, just, you would see exactly the opposite. You'd see a downtrend uh, here in uh, July through October or so, and then you'd see a consolidation down at the bottom of that trend. But we're just bumping right up against the top or the bottom of the market, depending on how you're looking at it. At the same time, we've got gold just bumping up against, uh, up against a resistance level. And, I mean, let's, let's just assume for a minute, I, I know this may require a bit of a leap, but let's just assume that the stimulus and all that sort of thing actually does turn out to be somewhat effective. And uncertainty begins to bleed out of the market a little bit. And so this store of value that is gold begins to uh, lose some of the demand and it begins to peel off. That's going to be very bad for the Aussie, and it can send the Aussie straight up through this consolidation that we see, uh, this resistance level that we see here to the upside. But we could, we could approach this from a couple of ways. Number one, we can go back to, uh, I'm going to go back to my old trade my chain sheet here, and I'm going to bring up AUX, which is the symbol for the, uh, the contract on uh, uh, the, the ICE contract on the dollar, Australian dollar currency pair. And I know my 153.57, that's kind of my at the money, so let's say uh, uh, 154, and I could be going out here, you know, looking for a long term opportunity, so something that doesn't expire for quite a while. So I could buy an option here, maybe I try to in my order, I can try to split the spread or, or curb the spread a little bit. And keep in mind, we're also after market here a little bit, so things are a bit of exaggerated. When I was looking at this in the live market, it, it, it does tighten up a bit. So as you're looking at option quotes yourself, uh, in, based on, so if anything I've said intrigues you to, to investigate this more, um, look at it when the option, when the market's open. Um, it's gonna look you know cool. why? At 4 o'clock, the market makers don't like everybody, to, uh, the other market makers to see their quotes because they feel like they're going to get gamed by you know, somebody sort of figuring it out. So that's why they pull their curve back. Yeah, the bid ask is a lot tighter than this, but you would have to see it during normal trading hours. Yep, thanks, Steve. Exactly. So, I, so some of the things we're doing, I'm using the chain sheet because I wanted to make sure that, you know, when you're looking at this on your own, you know where you're going. The prices are going to look a lot more reasonable. But what if we, what if we decided to go ahead and buy, you know, and, uh, and the at the money or, Maybe we go a little bit in the money on this, on this call side. And so we decide to invest a little bit in this position. We think that there's an opportunity here. But we want to we take some of that risk out of the market. Uh, we, we could actually, even though a long position is inherently limited risk to just the amount we've invested, uh, we could further take some, uh, some of that time value risk out of this by selling a diagonal. So if you've, if you've ever traded a diagonal spread 
on an equity option or on the SPX or something like that. The same thing applies here, but um, uh, the, I find that the differential between uh, y your short-term options, the premium you collect on the short-term call that you'd sell against this long-term long position, uh, works out pretty well. So traditionally, when you look at a, uh, a diagonal spread, you, you, a, a traditional way to look at it, I should say, is you buy an in-the-money call or put, you know, whichever. But we're going to look at a call in this case because we think the Aussie is going to go up. And so we're, we're, we'd look at buying a call. And then maybe, let's say, the 151s. And then we'd be looking at selling, just like we would a covered call, an out-of-the-money call in the short term, so in March, where we, where we get to collect 4 bucks against the $20 that we spent. Now, if the market just kind of stays flat, doesn't go up too much, we're going to keep that premium that we sold, and we could do it again the next month. Uh, however, our, our short position in the short term, where we get to harvest all this time value, it's covered against unlimited risk because we have a long position that, uh, that covers. So if the market goes way up, we have this long position that's going to earn intrinsic value that offsets those losses against the short call that has some exposure to the upside. So it's just one more way we can limit our risk and approach uh, a market problem where we see that there's some fundamental and technical reasons that upon a breakout above this resistance line here on this consolidation, there may be some real opportunity. We could easily see the Aussie dollar at 185, 190. Uh, there, there isn't any reason why we couldn't see it up there. One, uh, 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 pr starting to approach two Australian dollars to the uh, to the U.S. dollar, especially if um, the dollar stays fairly stable this year and gold begins to collapse. So it, it's it's one of those ways we could take advantage of that opportunity upside, but start to pull out a little bit of that risk associated with time value by diagonalizing it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here. The uh, couple of uh, reminders. I, I've got my um, I've got my uh, 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 chat screen up. So if you've got a question, um, ping away on chat. I'd be happy to uh, answer your questions. And just a quick reminder that if you'd like to, if you feel like some of the things that I said were intriguing, but you weren't quite sure how you might put it together in a portfolio, you've never tried diagonalizing a spread, for example or you've never tried a covered call, or whatever it is, you can find a ton of information. It's all free. There's an options tab on our site. There's a Forex tab on our site. And there's several courses uh, for, each of those, uh, for each of those markets under those tabs. And we put out new material pretty much every day. There's always something, uh, something interesting to see there. And you can, get, uh, you can get some basic education as well. I'll pause here. If anybody's got any questions, I wonder if I should bring up my John, I have a question, Steve. Go ahead. John, do you mind, you know, on your website, I think you do an incredible job of those short segments where you talk about certain option strategies. Um, can you uh, just enlighten all the attendees how they can get to those where you have a clipboard behind you and you're sort of drawing? I, I think it's just great. You know, I do a lot of options education, but um, just let everybody know how they can get to that. Uh -huh, you bet. You bet. Okay, so I'm... I'm uh, I'm here on the web. Let me bring up a new web browser here. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go to www.learningmarkets.com, and uh, we, when you go to our site, there's there's probably two things I would suggest. There, we do real current. We, we don't do news, by the way. So if you're interested in news, um, the uh, you know, I, I recommend any of the portals. They, they have great news. So go to Yahoo News for your news. But um, uh, if you want to see, you know, well, how does the news really apply to, like, a trading strategy, uh, we, that's what we try to do. So, uh, for example, I've just come here right to the main site, and we have a list right on the front page as to what's our, what's our most recent articles within each category. So we've got, uh, you know, Currency swaps, for example, looking good for the dollar in Forex, in the Forex fundamentals section. Um, understanding financial statements on the balance sheet, so if you really want to understand how to do that. If you, uh, if you would like to learn more about specific um, topics, you can always, you know, you could, of course, search for them. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.